Hey guys, Jennifer from Scrapping Under the Influence. Today we are going to be doing a very tall, skinny, very simple album. This will hold 4x6 photos in either the portrait or landscape orientation, depending on how you decide to mat your book. This will work either way, um, just depending on, on how you decide to mat your book as far as like directional papers, that kind of thing. So we're actually also going to be wrapping this in the new method that Tammy over at um, Country Craft Creations has come up with because it's really cool, it's very easy, and I'm going to walk you through how to do it. So we're going to start out with two pieces of chipboard that are four and three eighths wide by eight inches high, and one piece that is eight inches high by one and a quarter inches wide for our spine. And my arrow on that is obviously going the wrong direction, and that's okay. So let's start, I'm going to bring my scoreboard in here. So to cover this, what we basically do is we're going to wrap each of these pieces individually. We're then going to wrap our spine piece and then attach it all together, okay? If you haven't seen her do this yet, it's actually really, really cool. So to start, you need two pieces of chipboard that are six and three eighths wide by 10 inches high. We're going to use our chip, our chipboard, our, um, what you call this thing, scoreboard, <laughs> to kind of help us get this lined up right. So we're going to make sure this is pushed all the way to this corner. And then I've got just two scraps of chipboard that are cut to one inches wide. We're going to use that to help place our chipboard in the center of this piece of paper. Or, yes, chipboard in the center of the paper. I know what I'm trying to say. So I've already backed this with score tape. So let me get that backing off of this, maybe. If it doesn't want to fight with me. <laughs> oh, for and I promise you, I burnished this stuff down when I put it on here and it still does not ever want to come off. There we go. Okay. So, make sure paper's pushed up there. Make sure our little guide's here. And all we're going to do is run, push this up against the top guide and against the side guide. And drop it down. So, that is now perfectly centered on our piece of paper. So let's do the other one, and we've got both of those ready to go. And if you haven't tried the big store, score tape sheets, they are absolutely amazing. They give you the best looking, nicest, cleanest looking album covers ever. Okay, so there is our second piece. We're going to start with these. I'm going to get my bone folder and what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and fold this up and all the way over to crease it and then you're going to come out both sides with your bone folder and crease that down. Okay. You're going to do the same thing on the opposite side. Okay. And then do it again the other direction. What we're trying to do here is make some little squares that we're going to then trim. So see how this gives us a square right here? We're going to cut that out here in just a second. Okay. Let's do the other side. that down. We're just going to burnish the edge of that chipboard. All right. So all you're going to do is follow right along those score lines and you're going to cut out that square.
Okay, you're going to do that on all, all four corners. You're not going to try to angle them or anything yet. We're going to get to that in just a second. Okay. So now what you're going to do is you're going to fold these in. You're going to fold that over. You're going to hold it and you're going to look and see is any of that paper hanging over. So see how we've got just a little bit hanging over on this side. We've got just a little bit hanging over on this side. So you're going to hold that up, you're going to put your scissors against the side of your chipboard and just angle it ever so slightly and cut. Okay, same thing on this side and cut. We're going to do this on all four pieces, or I'm sorry, all four sides, not all four pieces. Both pieces, all four sides. Okay, so we're going to cut just a tiny bit off of this side. So again, I'm putting my scissors up against the side here and using that as my guide for where I need to cut that chipboard. Or, not chipboard, that cardstock. And you can see it better on this back side. So see how that hangs out just ever so slightly? Put scissors up against there, use it as a guide. Okay. And we're going to do the same thing on this side. This side actually looks fairly clean, but I think we're going to just angle it ever so slightly anyway. Okay. That one's really hanging out. This side's not too bad. I think I must have inadvertently out of habit angled that ever so slightly when I cut it out, but that's okay. All right, so now I'm going to come in here with my glue that hopefully is not clogged today, and I'm going to run, I'm gonna start with my long sides, and I'm going to run glue and I'm clogged. Okay, hold on. done to my glue. So we're going to open that up so we'll quit bubbling all over the place. Anyhow, so to clean these out, and Tammy actually showed this on a live the other night, and I'm so glad she did, all I've got is pipe cleaner. I'm going to come up in here and I'm going to twist it around and it's going to push all of that dry glue out of the end of that little tiny metal tip, and it's going to pull all that gunk out of the inside and now the inside of that's clean. It's just amazing. I, I have just absolutely amazed how well that worked. So now we're going to do it on the inside of this one. So for the bigger tip, you're just going to fold it in half and you're going to do the exact same thing. Let's not drip glue on the project. That would be dumb. And then just twist that around in there. And see how it gets all of that crud out of that inside there? Absolutely the best idea I've ever seen. And now I have lost my little middle tip. <laughs> because of course I have. And then all you do with this is just clip this off, throw away the gunky end, and you're all set to use the rest of it again later. Oh, there it is. Okay. Anyway. Now that we've gone through glue bottle 101, there we go. See, that's coming out much better. I'm just going to run glue. Now I'm going to fold it over. Burnish it down. And we're going to run our bone 
folder along here and we're going to do the same thing on all three other sides. Hopefully the noise, my husband's outside mowing the lawn, hopefully it's not going to be too distracting because it should move fairly quickly past my window. <laughs> okay, one more side. came about is um, on the cruise retreat for Country Craft Creations, I guess, somebody had asked Tammy if there was an easier way to build your covers for your albums because I guess she had kind of arthritic hands and it's hard for her, especially if it's a larger one, you know, how we bend them and then you, you know, do adhesive all down that long strip and then, you know, have to kind of fold it and push it all at the same time. And it can be kind of hard, especially if it's a really big project. I know I have had a hard time with really large albums doing that. Um, one in particular, and I really might redo it using this method. Um, I had that like quad fold folio that I did a while back that folded out into four pieces. And by the time you went to wrap that thing, it was just huge, really, really huge. And I really want to go back and try doing it with this method and see how it turns out. I hopefully can do that here before too much longer. Um, we're getting ready to go on vacation. And I don't know if I'm going to have time before we go. So again, we've got those corners. I'm just going to cut those corners out. it sticks out and trim that down. Again, scissors on the side, trim it. See that one, I can see it sticking out without even folding it over. And on that one. Okay. I'm going to fold those in, fold this over, and that side actually looks okay, this side needs trimmed for sure. I really kind of cut that one a little much, but that's okay. It still works. Okay. We're just going to glue again like we did before. And he's outside the window again. I apologize. I have to do this when he's not in the house and downstairs because then it's really loud at times. <laughs> okay. Although now our basement is done and I am so excited. It looks really great. My husband worked really, really hard on it and I'm really, really proud of him. He did a wonderful, wonderful job on it. Thank you. 
Mm. Look at that. Okay, go outside. Okay, I'm missing out. That's fine. that down so you've got now these two pieces okay all right wrap ready to go okay so the spine's going to be a little bit different our spine like i said is one and a quarter by eight inches uh the paper to cover that is going to be three and a quarter by ten inches we're going to use our same method we did before to get that perfectly centered on there so we've got our one inch um chipboard scraps there I guess to use kind of as a guide I'm going to get the backing off my tape and then we are going to slide that on in here and down we go okay move all that out of the way Okay, we're going to do the same technique with the folding that we did before to get our, our corners, but this time we are not going to cut those corners out. We're going to do it a little bit differently, and it will all make sense in a minute. Okay, the same thing again. For this one, I am using the brown artisan cardstock from Country Craft Creations. It's the first time I've used the brown, and I bought it, I think, for a totally different project, actually, and it looks really good with this bow bunny Christmas paper. I was kind of surprised. Okay, so now you've got your, I'm going to do it from the back, because so you can see it a little bit better. We've got our square here. Instead of cutting it in and in, we're actually just cutting this corner off like so. So you're going to line up with the bottom score line, go up to the top score line, and cut off that little triangle off the side. No, it's not quite right. There we go. Okay. So, on this one we're not folding the sides in, we're just going to fold this top and bottom. Okay, so we want really good coverage on this end. We're going to still do our um, spine area, or I don't know what you call this, the point at the top of the chipboard where the cardstock comes up against it. Does that have a name even? <laughs> I don't know. Oh my gosh. So if you haven't seen Tammy do this already, this is basically... An exact walkthrough of her exact tutorial. Uh, she did a um, YouTube live the other night to test out YouTube and actually walk through how to do this. And I had seen she had shown it actually another version, or well, had shown it another night on Scrapbookers, I think it was, just very quickly, like at the end of something. And um, it worked really well. Okay, so we're going to fold this over again, essentially just to check so that we can angle these corners. And you're going to do the same thing again. Use that chipboard as a guide, and you're going to just cut through there. And you're going to get that slight angle so it doesn't hang over the top of your book. And again... So now we're going to lay this with the fully covered side facing up and we're just going to come along here and we're going to burnish. Okay. And again on this side. Okay. We're going to turn it over, fold again to make sure that nothing's hanging over that's not supposed to be hanging over and burnish. And again. And this is just helping to, to um, break the fibers in the paper. Okay, so now what we're going to do, turn this over. Don't smell like that, like this. 
We're gonna make sure nothing's hanging over that's not supposed to be. And it's literally gonna sit right up against that spine just like that, okay? And now you're probably thinking, okay, but we always are told to leave that gap. Well, the reason you're leaving that gap is because the paper can't stretch. If you put the chipboard and you're wrapping it the normal way, and you put that chipboard all the way up there and you try to fold this cover over, your chipboard's gonna crack right at that point. With this, because there's no chipboard going across that seam, it's not gonna break. Okay, so I'm gonna run this one more time. So then all we're gonna do is come in here with our glue. I haven't tried this with score tape. As far as I know, I don't think anybody in the group's tried this with score tape so far. Um, I don't know if it would work. I may have to try it with score tape just to satisfy my own curiosity. But all we're gonna do is push this piece up against the side of that spine, make sure it's lined up top and bottom, and burnish it down. We're gonna turn it over and we're gonna burnish again. And then we're gonna do the exact same thing on the opposite side. I'm gonna come in here one more time with this, get that pushed down where I want it here with the glue. Okay. Two, and this is probably what I love about this more than anything, it helps get your covers nice and straight and even because Lord knows when I'm doing it the other way and I'm putting down the chipboard and I'm leaving that gap, I have had wonky covers. I can't even tell you how many times. And this way, you don't have that happen. Okay, so now we're gonna cover this inside, okay? So since this is eight inches, this piece is seven and seven eighths, or should be. Yep, seven and seven eighths, and it is five and three eighths wide because it's a little bit wider than it probably needs to be. We could get away very easily with five inches. Um, I'm gonna put some score tape on the back of this maybe. I know Tammy likes to put it down and then come in here and cut on the side. I don't because I'm paranoid. <laughs> so actually I'm going to cut this down to five inches. Just makes it a little bit easier. Okay. So, whoops. So I'm going to cut this down to five inches. I'm going to set my little scrap there put score tape on the back of this just because it does help it lean not lean lay so smooth and so flat that needs just a hair off of that because it's gonna hang or hang isn't it oh, there we go well, I may have just permanently stuck yeah there we go <laughs> again adhesive challenged right here that's me there we go that's perfect okay so we're gonna wind up at the bottom here peel that off and how much do I need at the top about that much perfect so this is why I keep the scraps of the score tape Add those to my score tape scraps. And apparently, we're going to do it this way instead, so that's okay. All right, let's bring our base back in here. Before we get that on here, since this has had a minute to dry, all we're going to do is fold this all the way over, burnish it down. Okay, 
we're going to do the same thing on the other side. That just works that crease. Okay, so there it is before we cover the inside. And as Tammy said, see that's how it looks from the outside. Looks good. It's actually a lot sturdier than you would think, which is probably what surprised me more than anything. And you end up with almost this like perfect square up here at the top, which is awesome. Okay, so uh, now we are going to just cover that up. This is going to give it some more strength on the inside. More strength, hold those covers onto the spine. Uh, where's my, there it is. sideways so I can see where I'm lining this up at. I'm just going to center this on here and burnish that down and then we're going to fold again. Work that crease, fold it over, work it some more. is our cover with the new method that we've been using that Tammy has come up with. I kind of love it. It works really well. But let's All right, let's start on our pages. So, this is going to be a little bit different as far as how we're going to do these pages because they're very simple. All that we've got going on all of these pages, they're all identical. It's going to be a flap and a pocket. We are not going to do any inserts. We're not going to do anything overly fancy. It's going to be a very, very simple album. So because of that, and because I wanted to keep it small as well, uh, what we're going to do, we're not going to do like a normal hinge like you would do on most books. This is going to be a little bit different. We're going to start with one page that is going to be seven and three quarters high. These are all going to be seven and three quarters high. You need to cut one five and a quarter, one five inches, one four and three quarter, and one four and a half. All of them are seven and three quarters high. The first one, the five and a quarter inch wide page, you're going to score at one inch. The five inch wide, you're going to score at three quarters of an inch. The four and three quarters wide, you're going to score at half an inch. And the four and a half inch wide, you're going to score at a quarter of an inch. When we put these together, we're going to stack them. Okay. So we're going to start with the five and a quarter and the five inch. I'm going to get this folded over. I'm going to put some glue on this hinge. I ignored it for too long now it's going to fight with me. Again. <laughs> yep. Okay, we are going to do this, and this is probably would be easier if you don't fold it after you score it. You're going to marry those two edges up together. Okay. What you end up on the inside with is this quarter inch gusset. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing again, this time with the four and three quarters piece that's scored at half an inch. We're gonna get our glue on here. Let's get that off that edge. Okay, you're gonna come in here again. You're going to line it up at the very edge again, just like you did before. And there we go. There's our next page. 
And then for the last one, we're going to do the exact same thing. This is the one with the quarter inch scored edge. And again, we're just going to put that out even with the edge. As I said, I wouldn't recommend folding those score lines until you've attached everything. So when it's attached, you're going to have this little quarter inch difference between all of those pages. Once they're folded, I'm going to fold it over this way actually, just burnish that. There is our entire page assembly that's going to go down in our book. You can put this in with the that little extra tab at the back or at the front. It's entirely up to you. I think I'm going to put mine at the back. And all we're going to do is put glue all down this edge, center it up on here, excuse me, center it up on here, side to side, top to bottom, and glue it down. that sit for a second. For the pages themselves you're going to cut eight flaps that are four and a quarter by six and five eight. You're going to score all of them at half an inch on the six and five eight side. So I'm going to grab my, actually I think I'm going to do it with glue. I don't want to mess with the score tape today. <laughs> Let's go ahead and fold all of these. them down. these on each page, one on each page at the top of the page, okay? Which actually we need to cut just a hair off of these, so they're not going to be, I knew better what I did this. I will correct the measurements on the screen. So instead of them being four and a quarter, they're going to be like four and three sixteenths. And I knew this, and we're going to have to do it on the pockets, too, and I apologize. That's okay. I will put the cut list, of course, in the comments on this one because it is a very small project. Um, so, it makes it a little bit easier for everybody involved. and then we'll fix those pockets because they're not quite right. I'm going to fold that over, get some glue on here. Go 
and line it with the outside corner and the outside top corner of the page. Okay. We're going to do this on every page. We probably totally could have put these all together before we glued this whole thing in the book. That's a, it's up to you. Um, sometimes I do that, sometimes I don't. Sometimes I actually make a bigger mess of it when I try to do that. So I cannot tell you how many times I have done that and had to tear books apart because I've done something screwy with it being outside the book without realizing it. But that's me, so. <laughs> Okay, so for the little pocket, well, it's really more of a tuck spot that's going to go at the bottom of these pages. These are going to be 5 and 3 sixteenths wide by 1 and 7 eighths high, or I'm sorry, 1 and 5 eighths high. What you want to do before you even try to put it on here is you want to just kind of dry fit it and make sure that this flap isn't catching on that pocket because how we're keeping that flap down is we're just putting a tag in that pocket to keep that flap down, okay? So you want to make sure that these just barely touch, but they don't overlap. And if you need to adjust it at all, it's actually much easier to trim it off of the pocket. There's my big scissors. There we are. It's much easier to just trim a hair off the pocket than it is to do it off of the flap. So all I'm going to do for this is I'm going to put 3 8 inch score tape on each end. So you're scoring this at half an inch on each end. And then I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to put score tape, or quarter inch score tape, on the bottom. Now, you may be wondering why I did them like that as opposed to doing it this way where you've got that piece that folds under. The reason is I did that on the very back two pockets here and this tag just feels like it's loose in here and that it's not going to stay but when it's flat on the bottom it, this tag sits in here much much better. So we're just going to fold those over. Put 
backing off our score tape. You could glue these. I really hate trying to glue pockets. It never ends well for me. So for this, I every time I do pockets, I always use score tape. It just works better for me. It's just a preference. Okay. So you're just going to line that up along the bottom and along that in the, basically this bottom corner again just like you aligned the flap in the top corner and when it's in there your pot tags should slip in just like that so these are graphic 45 tags these are just oops, these are the regular craft tag album tags um, so this is size so that those will fit in here I don't know if I'm actually going to end up using these once I start matting or if I'm going to um, cut some of my own. I've got some really cute like tag topper dies I haven't tried yet that I need to to break out and try. I bought back in like April. <laughs> so um, but basically there is your book. Just like so. So Uh, I haven't done anything for the front and back inside cover. You could add a pocket in here if you wanted to. You could just do another photo mat with a journaling space underneath it, which is what I think I'm going to do. Uh, but that's, that's it. There's our book. Um, I'm going to decorate this and I'll come back and show you our finished product. Okay, so here is the finished book. Um, I had seam binding that was part of my design team package that has completely disappeared and I have no clue where it's disappeared to. <laughs> I've spent like three hours looking for it and can't find it. So what I did is I just added a band here with uh, black card, or not black, brown cardstock and used one of the border stickers from the sticker collection that goes with this um, and then just put a magnet under here and under here to uh, hold that closed. So um, for the tags, what I ended up doing was using my Cricut and using, you can just barely tell if I get the angle just right. Uh, I used my Cricut and the foil quill from We Are Memory Keepers to do the foiling on the tags. So these are just tucked down in here to hold the flaps down. And so all I did is just kind of made this a very simple kind of mini, um, what do you call it, December daily. And the tags are meant to be used for, you could put a picture on here, you could journal on here, you know, whatever you wanted to do with that. So that's what is all the way through the book here. And that's about it. Thanks for watching.